Lesson 19, I will solve word problems involving addition and subtraction of fractions. We're not going to use our journal again today. I know you're probably thinking we haven't used it on the last three lessons. Don't throw your journal away. We're not finished with it. But today we're doing some problem solving, so we're going to go right to our problem set. All right, so I want you to go ahead and get out your problem set. I want you to notice that it says we're going to use the RDW process. We're going to read, we're going to draw, and we're going to write. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this problem. Sue ran nine-tenths mile on Monday and seven-tenths of a mile on Tuesday. How many miles did Sue run in two days? So we're going to draw something here to represent this. Let's start with the tape diagram since we've never really, we have definitely used tape diagrams to, to model fractions, but we've never used one in the RDW process. So let's let this tape diagram represent the whole that we're talking about here. Okay, so we will say that the first part of the tape diagram here will represent Monday, and she ran nine-tenths of a mile, and this will represent Tuesday when she ran seven-tenths of a mile, and we want to know how much did she run all together. All right, so what would we do to solve this problem? Would we use addition or would we use subtraction? Well, if we want to know the total, we would use addition. So we're going to say nine-tenths plus seven-tenths equals 16 tenths. Okay, let's not leave this as an improper fraction, so let's go ahead and break this down in a number bond of a whole and what's left over. So it takes 10 out of 10 to make a whole, and there will be 6 tenths left over. So that means that she ran one whole mile and 6 tenths of another mile. So now we have to answer the question, how many miles did Sue run in two days? So we will say Sue ran one and six tenths miles in two days. Okay, all right, let's take a look at number two. Mr. Salazar cut his son's birthday cake into eight equal pieces. Mr. Salazar, Mrs. Salazar, and the birthday boy each ate one piece of cake. What fraction of the cake was left? All right, so again, we're going to start with um, something to draw here. I think a tape diagram would probably work best in this case. So let's think about this for a minute. This is going to represent the birthday cake. So I'm going to go ahead and label this one whole cake. And then they cut it into eight pieces. So we're going to divide this into eighths. So I'm going to start by dividing it into fourths. And then I'm going to divide each fourth in half. And now I have eight pieces. So as soon as I get finished here, I'm going to go back and count and make sure that this is indeed eight. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now it says that Mr. Salazar, Mrs. Salazar, and the birthday boy each ate one piece. So here's how much that they ate. Okay, and that's going to leave this much that was not eaten. So it says what fraction of the cake was left. So this is the part that we're trying to figure out. So they ate one, two, three eighths, and that leaves one, two, three, four, five eighths. So what's going to be our number sentence here? If you have three eighths here, and you're trying to find out how much is left, and you know the total, is this addition or is this subtraction? Well, it would be subtraction. We have one whole cake minus three eighths, and that would equal five eighths. You could figure this out by saying eight eighths minus 3 eighths equals 5 eighths. So what fraction of the cake was left? So we can say 5 eighths of the cake was left. Okay, let's look at number three. Maria spent 4 sevenths of her money on a book and saved the rest. What fraction of her money did Maria save? Take a minute and see if you can draw something to represent this problem. Go ahead and pause the video, think about what you would draw, and then come back and let's see if we drew something similar. Alright, so hopefully you thought of something to draw. You may not have thought to draw a tape diagram, but that's what I'm going to use. That always seems to work best. Alright, so what would be the whole in this case? Well, in this case, the total would be all of Maria's money. We don't know how much money it is. It doesn't ask us that. We just know that this is all the money that Maria has. And it said that she spent four-sevenths of her money on a book. So I'm going to 
divide this into two parts and say this is the money that she spent on the book and then she saved the rest and we want to know how much what fraction of her money did Maria save so what would this number sentence be if I have the whole and I have a part and I'm trying to figure out the other part do I add or do I subtract well anytime I have the whole and one parts missing that means I have subtraction so I have one whole minus four sevenths and I'm trying to figure out what that equals well I can start four sevenths and count up to one whole or I can say well seven sevenths minus four sevenths equals three sevenths so what fraction of her money did Maria save Maria saved three sevenths of her money All right, moving right along. Let's look at number four. Mr. Jones had one and four eighths pizza left after a party. After giving some to Gary, she had seven eighths pizza left. What fraction of a pizza did she give Gary? All right, so I want you to stop for a minute and think about what could you draw here. And then I want you to come back and let's see if we drew something similar. Okay, so hopefully you took time to think about what you could draw. I'm going to, again, I'm going to go with a tape diagram because it usually works in most situations. So the total here would be how much pizza Mrs. Jones had left after the party. It says that she had one and four eighths of a pizza left. And this goes right here. It's the hope. Okay. So we know that she gave some to Gary. We don't know how much. It just says some. And then after she gave him some, there was seven eighths left over. So we want to know what fraction of the pizza did she give to Gary. So again, we have the total and we have a part. So when you have the total and the part and you're missing one of the parts, is that addition or is that subtraction? Well, it is subtraction. So I have one and four eighths minus seven eighths. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this mixed number into an improper fraction. So one whole would be eight eighths and then I had four eighths left over. So altogether I have twelve eighths. So this is going to be twelve eighths minus seven eighths which equals five eighths. What fraction of pizza did she give Gary? Mrs. Jones gave Gary five eighths of a pizza. Okay, all right, let's take a look at number five. A baker has two pans of cornbread. He serves one and one fourth pans. What fraction of a pan was left? Why don't you pause the video and see if you can do this whole problem by yourself. If you get stuck and you're not sure what to do, you can always press play and do it along with me, but I bet you'll be surprised how much you can do by yourself. So pause the video and try to do as much of this problem by yourself as you can. Okay, hopefully you got your model drawn at least. And let's go ahead and think about this. The model represents what total? What total do we have here? We have two whole pans of cornbread. So this is going to represent two two whole pans and we know that the baker served one and one fourth pans this is how much he served we want to know how much was left so again I have my total and I have a part and I'm missing the other part so would I add these two numbers together or would I subtract them to find the missing part when I'm missing a part I'm always going to use subtraction so I have two minus one and one fourth. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this two and I'm going to break it down into one whole and four fourths. And let's think about why I'm going to do that. I'm leaving this whole like it is because I'm going to subtract a whole. And then I'm changing the other part into four fourths because I have to subtract a fraction. So now I have one and four fourths minus one and one fourth. Okay, so let's think about this for a minute. Two is the same as one and four fourths. Four fourths is a whole, 
so together they make 2. So 1 minus 1 would be 0, so I'd have no holes left, and then 4 fourths minus 1 fourth would equal 3 fourths. So let's think about what that makes sense. If you had 1 and 1 fourth and you added 3 fourths to that, you would have 1 and 4 fourths, or 2 whole corn pans of cornbread. So it does make sense. What fraction of a pan was left? So we would say 3 fourths of a pan was left. All right, let's look at number six. Marius combined four eighths gallon of lemonade, three eighths gallon of cranberry juice, and six eighths gallon of soda water to make a punch for a party. How many gallons of punch did he make in all? I want you to pause the video and do as much of this problem as you can by yourself. If you get stuck, just press play and come back and do it with me. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and you try to do as much of this on your own as you could. So let's take a look at our tape diagram here. It says that he used four eighths of a gallon for, li for lemonade, three eighths of a gallon for cranberry juice, and six eighths for soda water. So I've got four eighths lemonade, three eighths cranberry juice, and six eighths soda water. I wanna know how much did he make in all? So if I have all of the parts, but I'm trying to figure out the total, what would I do with these three fractions? Well, I would add them. So I've got 4 eighths plus 3 eighths plus 6 eighths. So 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 plus 6 is 13 eighths. I don't want to leave that as an improper fraction. So it takes 8 eighths to make a whole, and then I would have 5 eighths left over. So that would be the same as 1 and 5 eighths. So the question is, how many gallons of punch did he make in all? So Marius made 1 and 5 eighths gallons of punch. Okay, so... That was six problems. You will notice in every single one of these problems, I use the RDW process. When you get ready to do your exit slip and you bring it to me, if you have not used the RDW process, I'm just going to tell you that I'm going to ask you to go back and do it. So make sure that you read the problem, draw, that you write me a number sentence, and you write me a statement. Because if you leave any of those parts out, I'm going to ask you to go back and complete it. 